Hello guys and welcome to this K-Tip Thursday, which will be a little different today because today we're doing a tutorial on how to do the map effect that some of you guys may have seen that I'm using in some of my vlogs. Inspired by Andreas Hem and the first time I saw it I thought this would be impossible to do without After Effects and uh, for me using the Apple software I thought it would be kind of hard to learn the After Effects and I tried it once in After Effects but then I figured I should try this in motion which is Apple's software and I did and it worked so let's have a look at the effect and then we'll jump into the tutorial that's pretty cool right okay so this is actually not really difficult to do but you have to learn it so let's jump into Google Maps first turn off labels because you don't want those in there make a close-up screenshot of Bryant Park make a distance screenshot move it towards Central Park and make a distance screenshot then make a close-up screenshot and then we have four pictures like this then move all of these four pictures into motion then you'd want to drag the first two shots into the project make sure they're in the same group Turn opacity down to 50%, zoom in the distance shot so it fits the close-up shot and turn it back on to 100% and also make sure that the close-up shot is the one on the top of the group. One thing you have to do is to make this a 3D group because it's really important to make the effect work. The next thing to do is to do the exact same on the other two screenshots. So after doing these first steps, we will have to add a camera to the group. This camera is really important because it steers the angle that we're looking at. So first let's have it zoomed in on Bryant Park. Adjust it so you have it in the center or wherever you want it. And then skip ahead a few frames. Zoom out the camera angle, make a keyframe, skip ahead make another keyframe so that it stays in the same place for a little while and then skip ahead again a few frames move it over to central park make a new keyframe and then zoom in again i forgot to put this one keyframe on so i'm copying this keyframe and then put it on later so it stays there for a while and now we have the transition not completely done but it's getting there so I want this to go a little faster because it was too slow. So I'm putting the keyframes closer to each other. Now it looks good. Next thing I would want to do is to put on some clouds. And I have also stolen these PNG files from Andreas Hem. And you could go to his tutorial link down below to get those files. I'm putting the clouds on here. First thing I would want to do is to go to blend mode and add because I want them to be more clear and transparent. And then I make them a little bigger and then I put the set position because that will move the clouds up and down in the picture. Now we have something looking like this. But still I want one more cloud and then I'm putting the cloud on just above Central Park. Just doing the same thing. But it's actually one way to add the clouds without using Andreas's PNG files, which is to choose group, add object, generators, choose the generators and then clouds. And then you have it all over. Go to properties, scale, 500, opacity, about 35, then they're not as visible. And then go to blend mode, add, and then just choose the height of the clouds like this and then it's really good to go and after putting on these clouds I noticed that it would be so much cooler if it spins off the clouds in the end of the shot and that's why I'm putting on a rotation keyframe on the second last keyframe and then another one on the last one and then we'll get something like this okay so it's getting pretty cool right here and now what I also want to do, which is also <laughs> some files from Andreas, adding a chopper. You can choose yourself if you're adding a chopper, airplane, whatever. 
and in this case I'm adding the chopper in the first example I'm rotating the chopper so it moves like this directly over the frame and then I put a keyframe on to make it start where I want it to start and then put another keyframe on it to make it move while we're doing the transition and you also can choose if it's gonna go this way that way and uh, of course you can also choose if you're using an aeroplane which I think will be actually cooler in this case so now we've added the clouds, the chopper and everything and I think it start, it's starting to look pretty good and we're ready to export the project. And now you can choose yourself if you want to make this faster, slower, if you want to make a motion just after zooming out like I've done on this final thing that I made here or if you want to make a plane and uh, I have an example here on how you can make this shot even cooler but it's totally up to you and after this tutorial you probably know all about how to make your own adjustments to the effect. And that's it guys for today's. I hope you learned something and I hope that you can use this effect. It's really cool if you want to make a transition from one place to another. And again, thank you Andreas Hem for teaching us this effect. And uh, hopefully there's a lot of Apple users out there who can appreciate this tutorial. Thank you so much for following guys. I really appreciate it. Please don't hesitate to ask me any questions in the comments if you don't understand. And uh, please remember to subscribe to my channel. See you again next time. I'm going to Spain for a week or two. And uh, we'll get some vlogs from there. Thanks.